Good morning. I guess uh, one of the things, uh, what brought all this is about, is a lot of people, we have a lot of questions asked today, why do we still have a bow weaver program? Why are we still paying 75 cent a bell? So I hope when we get through here today between Philip and Alan and myself, I hope, I hope we can answer that question for you. Okay, the bow weevil started, the first bow weevil was found in the U.S. in 1892 around Brownsville, Texas. By August, uh, I may jump back and forth from screen to screen here. So that was in 1892. August the 25th, 1915, the first bow weevil was found in Georgia, which was in Thomasville. By November of 1915, the bow weevil was identified in 40 Georgia counties covering 86,000 square miles. By 1922, the bow weevil territory expanded all the way to Virginia, pretty much covering the whole cotton belt in the country. And just give you some numbers here, the way things was happening back then. Georgia produced 2.8 million bales on 5.2 million acres in 1914 with a yield around 258 pounds. Georgia produced 600,000 bales on 2.6 million acres of around 111 pound average in 1923. Georgia produced 112,000 bales on 115,000 acres in 1983 with average yield around 467 pounds. Georgia bow weevil eradication started in 1987, when we in that year we had 250,000 acres, and the first assessment was $10 per acre. But uh, back up just a second here. So it took the bow weevil 23 years to get from Brownsville, Texas, to Thomasville, Georgia. It took it 30 years to get from Brownsville, Texas, to Virginia. And go back and think about the travel, the less travel there was, vehicles moving up and down the roads. I mean, pretty much the wind or environment, don't know what it can move. To, today, it could happen real fast with all the travel interstate. The way we have travel interstate traveling off. I'll just throw this in there too. It's not on my slide here. But the last bowl we will, that was, has, we've had a couple flare ups since they've been eradicated was in 2002 in Brooks County beside a produce patch. And they went back and done the research, them bow weevils, a couple of bow weevils they caught had hitched hike with some em, 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 uh, immigrant farm workers coming to pick produce there. Is why they, why they figured out, which it wasn't no big deal. They didn't get blowed up. They got them knocked out right quick. I'm gonna look at this slide here, but I'm gonna go ahead and move over here to this slide while I'm reading this. The bow weevil assessment was $35 from 1988 through 1990. So that up there I got highlighting you a lot was the highest years that we paid, the most we paid per acre. The bow weevil was eradicated in 1990. In 1995, two million bales were produced on 1.5 million acres with total revenues of around $720 million, which was the highest in Georgia's history at that time. And that yield was around 666 pounds. The bow weevil assessment has been at 75 cent a bale since 2015. Up through 2019, we have $155 million invested in the eradication program in Georgia. And one other thing I highlighted over there was, uh, I, can't, I can't see my screen from where I'm standing, but anyway, 1.587 I think was that in 2011, was the most acres of cotton has been planted in Georgia since we eradicated the bow weevil. And we spent half the money that we have spent there by 2000, let me get my paper back over here, I can't see. By 1996, we spent the $80 million, which is half, pretty much half what we got invested today in the, in the eradication program. But that's, that screen there can sort of show you some of the acres that was planted and the cost where we dropped down and where, we, where we've leveled off at it at 75 cents. So, 
<clears throat> the reason we need to continue to have our boll weevil program and eradication program in Georgia is because we could have an outbreak of any time. And I'll show you in a minute why. Okay. So we're going to go to our next question. Okay, positive. We, 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 we all in this thing together. We have a protection. We have to protect the national bow weevil eradication investment and keep cotton production costs down is the reason we do this. <clears throat> in 2013, the National Bow Weevil Protection Fund was established. And I'm going to go to this next screen and I'm going to show you why. So I, why I'm reading. Each bow weevil foundation, which is like Georgia Bow Weevil Foundation, we, we agree to a maximum assessment not to exceed 75 cents cert per certified planted acre of cotton. The mandatorium of understanding will be executed between the cotton council and the, each foundation outlining provisions of this agreement. The National Bowl Weevil Protection Fund will, will be administrated by the National Cotton Council under the guidance of the National Cotton Council Bowl Weevil Action Committee. The Texas Bowl Weevil Foundation will operate the buffer and will petition funds for the operation of the program annually. The Texas Bow Weevil Eradication Foundation will submit actual costs for reimbursement to be approved by the National Bow Weevil Protection Fund Board. The National Bow Weevil Protection Fund Board sets the assessment rate. Each foundation collects and contributes the funds to the National Bow Weevil Protection Fund. So what we got right here, here's the problem. <clears throat> That's Texas right there. Your green, your dark green area is your winter garden area, which I call it the buffer zone. They call it the functionally eradicated. The red down there is the quarantine. That's the lower Rio Grande Valley. This past year, there was about 200,000 acres planted in that area right there. And they spent $20 million down there fighting them boll weevils still. Your dry land farmer pays $14 an acre, and your irrigated farmer's paying $28 an acre. Basically, basically we got them bow weevils backed in the corner down there. The problem is their, their environment is like tropical environment. They don't have a frost, they don't have a freeze, cotton never dies. They have to, I mean, they have to destroy everything completely. And it, it's just, it's really hard. Of course, we're dealing with Mexico right there too. So last year they had about 200,000 acres in that area, in that red area right there. <clears throat> okay, this year they're projecting 169,536, which they're going down some. This should just give you some insights on how things happen and what happened during the 20 crop year. Hurricane Hannah destroyed 70% of the crop on July the 25th. This past year, they had 51,500 traps deployed. They captured 40,065 weevils. They sprayed 1,297,933 acres with a 7.65 applications per acre. Of course, I didn't mention, they still having to pay $14 down there for the dry land and 28 for the irrigating. That does not cover their cost in that area. Well, government funding they get, and that, that's been being cut some along the way. So this protection fund was developed because them guys seem they, they're not going to be able to handle that with their funds they got. So we got this protection fund, and right now it's set at 25 cents an acre. We send them a check for every acre of cotton we grow in Georgia for 20, 25 cents for that protection fund. They had never made a draw. I think there's, they wanted to get it built up to about $15 million in that fund. Last year was the first year, I think they draw 5.5 or 6 million, something like that, Alan. Well, well these storms and all down there, and, and they had to do a lot more spraying this past year. They spent, I wanna say it was like four, about four, five, six million over their budget. This in 2020, so now they're, they are looking at it's about a seven million draw coming up. Well, a lot of people probably say, well, why don't we do that? Why don't we do that? That is cheap insurance. We would rather fight them bull weevils in Rio Grande Valley 
than to fight them in Georgia. It's like fight, if the U.S. got in a war today with another country, we'd rather fight them over there than we had here. So that's the way you got to look at the boy will deal. We'd rather fight them down there if we had to help them guys a little bit. Hopefully one day, hopefully one day, they are going to get them things eradicated down there. We don't know when. It seems like every year they have a major heat cut. But we can't, we can't not help them. Every state helps them do the same thing. That picture right there is right after the storm, and they had to mow that cotton down because, it, I mean, it, the, the hurricane got it. We see all that cotton on the ground, then they had to come in and hire that stuff up. They don't, every one of them seeds to come up down there. I mean, they're climate. There's pictures. When we go to these meetings, they show us pictures of wild cotton growing inside the road. They had to hire crews down there to pull up this cotton beside the roads. I mean, it's, there's wild cotton growing in the next crop every year. That's what makes it so hard for them to control the bull weevil down there. But we do have them cornered up, and we hope we keep them cornered down there. Okay, this is your Mexico, the Tama police, police area. Uh, they had 21,827,000 ,000 acres of cotton there. Last year, they deployed 4,440 traps. They captured 29,866 weevils. They had 451,500 acres of spray at 20 applications per acre. Now, Texas Bow Weevil Eradication Foundation does help them. They help them with their trapping data, they, the computer programs, and a few, a few things like that. We do help them. And they probably get, I can't remember, it's through the APHIS stamp deal or whatever. They're probably getting three, between three and three, between three and four million dollars from the U.S. a year, so we are the U.S. I say we. I'm not. I'm not down there in Texas, but the U.S. does help them and try to keep them control and keep them keep them on target. It's just a very difficult area to control the weevil in because of the environment. But hopefully, hopefully one day that'll happen, and we can keep minimizing our cost per bale. So that's about all I have. Alan is going to talk a few minutes about our Georgia program. And then after that, I think if y'all got any questions, y'all can ask questions. Thank you.